In the 11th century, the Bayid dynasty ruled what today is modern Iran. The empire had reached the height of its power, so it came as a shock to the ruler when he heard the rumors of his son's madness. The kind-hearted prince had long been gripped by melancholy. They weren't fully ready to call him mad, but it was undeniable. The heir to throne had begun mooing. Every day, he complained that he was one of the fattest cows in town. On his way to court, the man demanded that he be sent to the abattoir as soon as possible. He wanted them to make a load of tasty dishes from his meat, the cow's beef. The chef who did this would probably get rich since fatter cattle couldn't be found anywhere in the empire. At first, the young man's relatives didn't believe his madness. Some suggested that the prince was just playing a prank and pulling their legs. While everyone argued about the patient's condition, he continued mooing and tried to run off to a field to eat grass every day. When the situation worsened, it became clear to everyone that the patient was in no way joking. He stopped eating and refused to take his medicine. After he started losing weight from his hunger strike, the man was horrified and started fiercely demanding that they immediately send him to be slaughtered, since there was no use for a famished cow. <laughs> They summoned all the empire's magi and healers to the sovereign's palace. They tried to cure the mad heir to the throne, but nothing helped. Then a Persian doctor took up residence with the family. Having heard the story of the illness, he ordered them to give the prince some good news. They promised the prince that the next day, the town's main butcher would come and fulfill his request. In the morning, the doctor stormed into the prince's room, shouting, where's the cow here? The prince joyously replied that it was him who was the cow. By the doctor's orders, they bound him as they would when taking livestock to the slaughterhouse. Then the doctor sharpened a knife and approached the patient. He treated the prince as though he were actually a cow. The fake butcher stroked his sides, looking him over, and pinched him while he held the knife in his hand. Finally, he stood up and announced his verdict. This animal was too scrawny. There was no point in sending him to the slaughterhouse now. The doctor ordered them to fatten up their cattle as they should, and left. The prince was untied, and lunch was brought to his room. To the surprise of the servants, he threw himself on the floor with zeal. In the meantime, the doctor was preparing various medicines and potions in the neighboring room. They had started mixing them into the patient's food, and after several days, the mysterious illness passed. This story was told by the Persian mystic poet Abdurrahman Jami in his book Seven Thrones. Although the identity of the aforementioned prince isn't revealed there, researchers believe him to have been Abu Taleb Rustam, the son of the third Bayid ruler. When Abu Taleb inherited the empire, dissent and hostility were rank within. The young prince became depressed because of this, and his mother temporarily took command. This happened somewhere between 1014 or 1015 AD, when Abu Taleb was all of 21. At this time, a legendary academic, philosopher, and doctor lived in the state. He had such a long and complex name that everyone just chose to call him Avicenna. He was the doctor who cured the prince's illness. The previously mentioned melancholy that affected Abu Taleb is one of the strangest known mental disorders and is called boanthropy. Those who suffer from this illness fully believe themselves to be cattle. They can walk on all fours and eat grass, sometimes along with a herd of cattle. Why then are there no stories in the news of people being found on lawns, on the roadside, and on fields peacefully munching on plant life? It's possible that boanthropy is the rarest mental disorder known to medicine. Researchers discovered only 56 recorded cases in the world's medical literature, but it's predicted that the number of these incidents is significantly greater. Its symptoms might appear amusing, but in actual fact, they're very dangerous. The human digestive system is suited for digesting large quantities of grass and hay, and such a diet can lead to serious health problems or even death. And what if a person one day wakes up with the realization that they're a wolf? Is that the sort of story you've heard before? All such cases are related to clinical zoanthropy. People suffering from this form of madness believe that they're transforming into, or have finally turned into, an animal. You may recall Frank Kafka's short story, The Metamorphosis, where the main character discovers he's become an insect. The writer used such a transformation as a literary device, and the English doctor Robert Bayfield mentioned similar cases in his treatise De Moborum Capitis. In his work from 1663, the London academic named this occurrence lycanthropy, 
A patient with this illness, which was also called lupine madness, thought himself a wolf or another similar beast. At night, he wandered round fields and graves howling or barking and caught up on his sleep in a secluded place during the day. The ancient Greeks also wrote about the same sickness. They used the term synanthropy to denote mythical beings able to take human and canine forms. There was also another word in use at the time, therianthrope. Therian meant wild animal and anthropos meant human. You probably know many similar tales of things half beast and half human. Many of the ancient Egyptian gods, for instance, had such a form, as did the Minotaur and Sphinx and satyrs and centaurs. Cases of lycanthropy are encountered more often not only because people have heard stories of shapeshifters before. They believe the wolf to be a powerful and dangerous creature, so their brains select that illusion. You can't say the same for cattle. Imagine a film where an attractive woman meets a mysterious young man, but it turns out that at night he turns into a cow. That sort of plot might be of interest to Bollywood though, since the animal is considered sacred in Hinduism. Let's get back to real cases of boanthropy though. Psychiatrists define this condition as a case of delusional misidentification disorder. The reasons for it are not exactly known. Academics noticed that similar illnesses often complemented mental disorders, schizophrenia and severe depression, for example. It's believed that onsets of the illness can be treated quite effectively with medicine and psychotherapy. It's quite surprising, but a case of boanthropy is also mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Daniel, the story is told of the Lord's punishment of the ruler Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled the Neo-Babylonian Empire in 6th century BC. He waged war on Judea and Jerusalem, banning the Jewish people from the land. Nebuchadnezzar was extremely satisfied with his accomplishments. He was drunk with power and boasted of his boundless riches and victories over his enemies. The ruler had no intent of repenting for his sins, and God decided then to silence the braggart. Nebuchadnezzar distanced himself from people, and the all-powerful ruler started eating grass like a bull. So he continued until his hair and nails had grown long as a lion's. It's believed that the man spent seven years in this feverish state until he repented. It's curious that in the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls, academics discovered notes of another mad Babylonian ruler who walked the desert for 10 years. The ancient text mentions a man called Nabonidus. He ruled 20 years after Nebuchadnezzar, and during his reign, the Neo-Babylonian Empire disappeared unable to bear the pressure of the Persian forces. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Nabonidus writes of an illness that lasted seven whole years and mentions a Judean exorcist who managed to cure it. Later, he happens to talk about the prophet Daniel, although in his book, Nabonidus took the place of the despot Nebuchadnezzar and there were no claims that the previous Babylonian ruler ate grass. Considering the strange and rare nature of boanthropy, it's no surprise that it was connected to hypnosis, sorcery, and black magic. One of the more plausible explanations offered is sleep disorders. Mark Agresti, a psychiatrist from Florida, when talking of boanthropy, shared the story of one patient who suffered from sleepwalking for many years. The woman did everything in her sleep. She cooked, cleaned the house, did online shopping, and found out about it all in the morning. After she woke up, the woman didn't understand what she did. She could find her house in absolute disarray with furniture rearranged, gadgets disassembled and kitchen utensils rearranged, but that wasn't the strangest detail. One time, the American woman woke up in the middle of the night. She thought she heard the sound of the garage door opening. Looking out the window, she nearly jumped out of her skin. Her nine-year-old daughter had gone out onto the driveway and was on her bright yellow bike. The highway up ahead, despite the late time, was extremely busy. The girl didn't know what she was doing. She also suffered from sleepwalking. And even when she grew up, Dr. Agresti's patient couldn't fully recover from the illness. The psychiatrist therefore decided that one of the causes of boanthropy might actually be sleep disorders, since patients with the illness also aren't aware what they're doing. Boanthropy might also be an additional symptom of another illness not linked to the mind. Apart from schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, which were previously mentioned, porphyria, general paresis, and even paralytic dementia brought on by syphilis could all be causes. Porphyria is a generally rare genetic blood disorder. Without getting into medical details, you could say that hallucinations, depression, anxiety, and paranoia are all typical of the illness. 
Paresis is also linked to separate peripheral nerves or an entire system of said nerves being damaged. In causing atrophying muscles, this neurological disorder is in fact a precursor to paralysis, and paralytic dementia develops as a consequence of syphilis, which disrupts brain activity. Such serious illnesses can cause hallucinations, which a person might believe to be reality. However, this doesn't explain why patients would think they're cows. It's possible their brain latched onto this image in their memory by sheer coincidence. The famous psychiatrist Eric Bernay was convinced that the cause of similar deviations had to be pursued in someone's childhood. And you have to admit this theory explains the behavior of both the Babylonian kings and the young ruler of the Bayid dynasty. The first years of a person's life are a magical time when a child lives in a world of their invention. They can believe in mythical creatures or become different animals in their thoughts. As they mature, their connection with the real world becomes so much stronger, while the world of the fantastic is extinguished. But these childhood emotions remain somewhere in the depths of the conscience, and the unexpected appearance of a bovine identity in the patient's mind could signify a unique escape from a reality full of stress. Cases of zoanthropy are mentioned in the surreal film, The Lobster, where people get to decide which animal they want to become for themselves. If you had the chance to change into a different creature, what would you choose? Share your ideas in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to leave a like. Click the bell so you don't miss out on our new videos.